Split Squat, Front Foot Elevated, Dumbbells. The Front Foot Elevated Split Squat is one of my favourite unilateral lower body exercises as it offers many benefits including structural balance, knee health, hip flexibility, ankle flexibility and lower body strength gains. The height of the elevated surface depends on your lower body strength and flexibility. The lower the elevation, the greater the strength and flexibility demands. In this video, you will notice that I hold the dumbbells with the palms facing forward. This allows me to maintain a much better posture in the split squat by creating more tension in the back muscles. The palms facing forward helps to set the shoulders in an externally rotated and slightly retracted position that encourages me to lift the chest. Palms facing forward is my preference, but palms facing inwards is also an option. To perform the front foot elevated split squat, place one foot on the elevated surface and the other on the floor. The stance width will depend on your hip flexibility and the elevation height, and you'll need to experiment with this to find the best width for you. You want to keep the feet hip width apart. Imagine you're standing on tram tracks and not a tight rope, as this will affect your balance. A common mistake in the split squat is not keeping the hips square. As we move down and forward in the split squat, the goal is to stretch the hip flexors of the rear leg. If you have tight hip flexors, the body tries to move around this by rotating the hips away from the stretch. This allows you to move deeper into the split squat, but it fails to stretch the hip flexors, which is one of the major benefits of doing split squats in the first place. To fix this, you want to ensure that the rear hip is internally rotated and the hips are square. You also want to tuck the pelvis under and keep the rear glute contracted to increase the stretch on the hip flexors. It's also essential to keep the heel of the rear foot off the floor. You want to have both the knuckle of the pinky toe and big toe pushing into the floor. If the pinky toe knuckle lifts off the floor, chances are the hips are not square and the body is moving around the stretch. Focus on internally rotating the rear hip, contracting the rear glute and pushing the knuckle of the pinky toe and big toe into the floor. The movement is both forward and down simultaneously with the intention of pushing the front knee over the toes. If you can't get the knee over the toe, you'll need to decrease the stance width or increase the height of the elevation. As you move forward and down, you must actively contract the hamstring to pull deeper into the squat and close the angle between the calf and the hamstring muscles. How close can you get your butt to the heel of the front foot? The front knee must track over the toes and not collapse inwards. Use the glute to abduct the leg and keep the knee tracking over the toes. At the bottom of the movement, the heel of the front foot stays connected to the elevated surface. You want to aim to keep the torso as upright as possible and feel a deep stretch in the front of the rear hip at the bottom of each rep. If you can't feel this stretch, extend the back knee and keep the rear leg as straight as possible. Your quad and hip flexor flexibility will dictate the level of knee bend in the rear leg. From here, reverse the movement by moving back and up simultaneously to fully extend the front knee and return to the starting position. Make sure you use the breath to help stabilize the movement. As you move down and forward, breathe in through the nose and deep into the belly and try to expand 360 degrees. Hold your breath at the bottom of the split squat before slowly exhaling through the mouth as you stand up. Perform the prescribed number of reps on one side before switching and repeating on the opposite side. Give it a try and see how it goes. If you've got questions, please leave them in the comments. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel.